Hey there, book reading friends. Um, I'm not going to have a lot of new stuff to tell you I read because it hasn't been that long since my last video. So um, I will share with you the one more book that I got read before the end of the month, another one I had started before the end of the month. Um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about um, some reading challenges. There's a couple of them that I really only have one of them no two of them that I only really have one book to read for this month or one book in a couple of short story novella type things um so I'm going to tuck all of those into this video um and then I'm also doing um a couple of other readathons that I'm going to do separate videos for because I'm insane and can't just do one readathon it feels a little nuts to be doing all of this um with the musical starting this next week it's my 11th year directing the musical at Fort Dodge Senior High and auditions are Monday in two days and then rehearsal start the next week, but I am determined to stay on top of my mental health and well-being, and reading has become a very, very valuable piece of my self-care routine. A um, couple of things I did want to give shout outs for that aren't necessarily reading, but they're reading adjacent. Um, if you've been alive for more than 10 minutes in the last year and awake and not living in a cave somewhere, you've heard of bullet journals. I've tried them. They aren't for me. Um, I can't not in their full form anyway. Um, I can't rewrite my calendar every month. I like having a planner. I use a real planner, a paper planner. I write things in, but then I also put it on my calendar and my phone because that's shared with my husband. So he knows what's going on. For things I'm afraid I'll forget if they're planned way out in advance, I can put a notification so my phone won't make noise at me. Um, but I decided, she doesn't even know this, um, when my daughter shared pictures of her bullet journal and her attempts to try bullet journaling. I decided to focus on the habit tracker part of bullet journaling and really make this about my habit tracking and my reading. So basically it's become my self care tracker really because all of my learning piano pieces for fun and learning vocal pieces for fun and learning to play the guitar and reading is all in this fun little, and I went super cheap is literally a need notebook that's got graph paper. I didn't do like a moleskin journal. I didn't have that kind of money to spend. So this is this is a good start. Um, I am tracking all of my reading. I'm tracking my year long readathons. I've got little habit trackers in there. Um, so I was inspired by Margaret Adele to do that because she's doing the whole bullet journaling thing. I've still got my calendar and my planner, but I've discovered that I will keep a bullet journal if it's all about tracking my self care habits. Um, as a part of having been diagnosed with cyclothymic disorder, which is high functioning bipolar back in September, October, October, um, I've, I've become very, very aware that neglecting my self care will cause me to have more bad days than I care to have. So this habit tracker is literally about my mental health. It's about yes, tracking the books that I read and that kind of thing, but it's also about keeping me mentally grounded. So um, shout out to Margaret Adele for the inspiration to start at least a fraction of a book, book a bullet journal, a part of a bullet journal or bullet journal modified. Um, the other thing that I did just because I got to the end of the year and I read a lot, but I couldn't really tell you what I couldn't, didn't have a great place to keep track of it. So I stumbled upon in one of the YouTube videos I was watching, one of the booktube videos I watched, I stumbled upon um, a form that the creator and the booktuber was gracious enough to share, Becca and the Books, has this amazing Google document spreadsheet set up. It's a tracker. It's got charts and everything. I don't use it as fully as she does. Um, this girl loves her statistics. She loves her charts, let me tell you. But I'm able to track the library books I've checked out and when they're due, which is beautiful to have that there. Um, I also track the books that I'm reading. I track the books that I've purchased and want to read. Um, my big goal is to get all the Kindle books I have. And I have 800 and some unread. If you've been paying attention, my goal is to get books off my Kindle and I started with 700 and some. I'm not doing a very good job. I keep adding instead of subtracting. I need to stop. Um, so I'm going to participate in um, a few readathons here in February. Um, one of them is going to be challenging because you have to go through the levels in order. Um, okay, I can do it. I know I can. I believe in myself. Um, there's another um, couple of readathons that I'm doing that are um, meant to be spread over several months. One of those, if I can get mine. Thank you. One of those is the, um, I even have my trusty dusty little reading challenge notebook, completely separate from everything else. Um, one of them is the, the uh, Consul Board Reading Challenge, which is all year. They have one book a month 
one book a month. It's so super simple. Um, one book a month for um, nine months of the year. Now they don't do a book in September. They don't do a book in October because there are Latinx readathons for those months. And they would rather, the creators of the Clint Board Challenge would rather have you participate in those month-long readathons. And then in December, they're just nice and say, we're not going to do anything here. Um, so really, it's nine books. One a month, I can do that easily. Um, I did finish. That's the one new book I need to add. Where'd it go? My desk is a mess. Sorry. Um, the Last Eight by Laura Pohl. Um, Laura herself is from Brazil. She was, grew up in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Um, if January, you were supposed to read a book that focused on mental health. Um, the main character is the focus of the mental health issue. And I won't give you the details, but as somebody who has battled suicidal thoughts and suicidal attempts my freshman year in high school, um, the portrayal of Clover and her suicidal ideation and what she does to keep surviving is so very real. But I never once felt triggered. I never once felt that I was in any danger of going down a dark path. So I don't know how Laura Pohl did it, but she handled it so beautifully. Um, Clover's a fighter. She's a tough kid. Um, the story ended up being a four star for me. I really wanted to give it five. The ending just kind of, it ended, but it just felt like the ending was rushed. I would have liked a little more detail, a little more drawn out description of how the ending came. Basically what happens is these aliens arrive on the planet and they start annihilating, like vaporizing humans. Humans turn into this cloud of dust that's hanging over the planet. And those that don't get vaporized start developing what they call, what survivors call the black lung disease from breathing in the dust of annihilated humans. There are eight people that survive and get to Area 51. One of them was living in Area 51. Um, so she was never exposed. And for whatever reason, she never caught the disease as the adults who left and came back, brought it back with them. Six of the seven, or six of the other seven, I should say, six of the eight, have all encountered the aliens face to face and literally watched them blow somebody else up. And then the aliens walked away like they didn't even see them there. Like they've made noise and the aliens have turned around to look at the noise, but didn't react to them. So there's something going on. Um, the answers to those questions are really well done. I loved this book. I love the sci-fi element of it because the last eight humans left alive on planet Earth are teenagers. As they're living in Area 51, which has generators and food supplies and water supplies. So they've got the basic necessities of life. Um, the rest of them are quite content to just live there. Clover is the one who's like, we need to see if there's anybody else alive. Can we take these things down? Can we beat them? And she, because she pushes borders and pushes envelopes and pushes people's limits, she discovers some things that are huge secrets that were kept from the general public that lead to six of these eight individuals having to really redefine who they are. Um, what they thought to be true about their own lives all of their lives hasn't been. And I don't want to say any more than that because I don't want to spoil it. Everything about this book was a five star. Until we got to the end, the big bad's been defeated. I'm like literally having one of those, oh my gosh, this is so good. And then it just sort of stopped. The ending felt a little rushed and a little unresolved to me. But I would definitely, absolutely, without question, pick up anything else Laura Pohl ever wrote and read it. Um, for someone who has battled suicidal ideation in her past because of mental health issues, to be able to read a book in which the character is actively fighting to stay alive. She's actively fighting suicidal ideation to keep putting one foot in front of the other, to keep going, to keep trying. Um, she manages to stumble across a radio broadcast from Area 51 and has a goal in mind, but it's hard because everywhere she goes, she sees blackened bodies in the streets and empty houses and empty cars and empty cities. Um, but as, as someone who has struggled with that, to be able to read about a character who's doing that and not, not find it a struggle myself, not ever feel pulled in a negative direction because Clover worked so hard to fight back. Um, Clover's Latinx, which is why I read it for the Clone Subboard Challenge. Not only is the author Latinx, but part of what Clover struggles with and part of the reason she's a little on the defensive when she arrives at Area 51 is because she was the only Latinx teenager in her tiny little town in Montana, I believe it was. She was the only Latinx teenager. Not just only Latinx girl, only Latinx teenager, period. So there were things, and her mother had dumped her on her grandparents' front porch and taken off. She hadn't seen her mother in years. So 
there are things about her and her culture that nobody in her town understands. So when she gets to Area 51, she's already prone to, you don't get me. But I love that when Laura Pohl was writing the conflict between the characters, Clover didn't fall back on that. Clover didn't fall back on that you're just being this way because I'm Latinx. Clover was aware she wanted to go out and fight and take on the enemy and everybody else was quite content to stay hidden away and ignore them. Um, she was very aware she was asking them to do something they didn't want to do. Um, but she didn't use the standard fallback of you just don't like me because of my race. It came up in discussion. There's also some um, LGBTQ representation. Two of the girls in the book, um, when they think they're going to die at the hands of the enemy, admit and, and, and share this passionate kiss. So there's some Nominal, very small, but it's there. There's some LGBTQ representation in that book. Um, I really enjoyed it. I will read anything else by Laura Pohl. Like I said, the ending fell a little flat for me, but the rest of the book was a phenomenal page turner. So it was astounding. I really, honestly, it would be a four and a half star for me. It's just, I know Goodreads hasn't figured out yet that we want to be able to give half stars. Um, there is another book that I'm reading um, because I have been challenged. I was at um, Barnes & Noble today, briefly, with my husband. And I saw the book in question, American Dirt, had its own little display sitting there by me. And my husband leaned over and went, fix your face, hon. Because apparently I was not making the most pleasant face when I saw it. It was sitting there in a pretty little display rack. And apparently I was kind of giving it a, and my husband was like, fix your face. I'm sorry. So I have determined that I'm going to add to my Latinx reading this year. And the Consumer reading challenge is one way. The other thing that I did is, um, an author on Twitter shared some pictures of books to go read. So I just started grabbing titles and searching um, at my own library. And I found this one, which apparently um, is a debut novel and will be coming up in one of my reading challenges very soon here. It's called The Affairs of the Falcons by Melissa Rivero. Um, it's about a family that immigrates from Peru to New York City. Um, I don't understand how, but the wife is not documented. Now, I'm not sure how Lucho is documented her husband, but, she, but, but Anna is not. Um, but yeah, it's, it's um, a legit immigrant experience from someone who's in that community and has the right to speak to it. Um, she herself, the, the author herself was born in Lima, Peru and raised in Brooklyn. The family in the book migrates, immigrates from Peru to New York City. So she's writing her life. Um, so I'm excited to read this and it will show up in a reading challenge later this month inspired by the Consumer Reading Challenge. But my book for this month, or February, you're supposed to read a romance. So my book for this month, um, for the Latinx, uh, or the Consumer Reading Challenge by Latinx authors, is The Victoria in My Head by Janelle Milanes, I think. I looked up the pronunciation, did not find it. I know very little about this book other than it comes very highly recommended as a Latinx romance. So I'm excited, I love a good romance. I'm a sucker for a good romance book, so I am here for this. But that's my Clones of War reading challenge. The other, I said there was another reading challenge I was doing, it was just like a book a month. This one is a book plus a couple of, I think, novellas or short stories or something. I have to get myself a little more um, <laughs> acquainted with exactly how this is all going to work. Um, there's a Cosmere Along that's happening all year long, reading the books of Brandon Sanderson. Um, this was inspired, I think I first saw the information on this on Rachel Maurice. I think it was Rachel Morgan's YouTube. I think she was the one. It was either her or Becca in the books. I watched so much of those two. I sometimes get them confused. Not them individually, but what I saw on their YouTube videos. Um, but this is the first book. And what they've done is they've set it up that for a couple of months, you read this chunk of books or this chunk of the series. So this book, I've been told, is like 600 and some pages. And then there's a couple of short stories to go with it. But I will be starting on this in February. Uh, Elantris by Brandon Sanderson as a part of the Cosmere Along. But I have February and March to finish this. And then there's a couple of side stories to go with it. Uh, the Hope of Elantris and the Emperor's Soul, which I haven't delved into those yet, but I know my library has this. So I can grab this at the library the next time I go, which will probably be this week because I'm weird like that. The other challenge that I'm going to do in this video, and then I'm going to do a separate one for a couple. I'm doing three challenges this month because I'm not like that. No, it's four. Sorry. Uh, but some of them are only real quick challenges. Um, the other challenge I'm going to do this month that is, is a little bit different. I am going to read all of these books. But the actual challenge is to post them over the course of a week on Instagram. So I'll be posting the pictures on Instagram. This is the Blackathon, uh, which is organized by Bowties and books they have created 
such a fun readathon, and I'm excited. I one of the re, one of the ways I'm using uh, one of the reasons I grabbed the book tracker that I mentioned earlier from Becca in the books is because I wanted to be a little more aware of what types of authors I was reading. Now, somebody said to me, "Well, you're probably reading all cisgendered white authors." White authors, yes. One of my favorite authors is not cisgendered. Uh, Patricia Cornwell is married to a woman. Um, her first marriage was to a man. Her second marriage was to a woman. I don't know exactly how she identifies, but I know that right now she's married to a woman, which is definitely not necessarily cisgender. Um, so my goal with that reading tracker from Becca in the Books was to take it, because one of the things you do when you track a book is you what, what nationality, how does the author identify? And I'm really rather ashamed that out of the 25 or 26 books I read in January, I had a lot of white. And I need to fix that. And I need to be intentional about that. So the Blackathon coming along in February is the perfect thing for me. Um, I've got, and like I said, there's a watch along on Twitter. You can watch and tweet live, live tweet the movies that they're doing on Twitter. Um, there is a YouTube challenge and there's an Instagram challenge. Now the YouTube challenge is two teams. The Instagram challenge is post a picture every day for five days, seven days, the 15th through the 21st, whatever that is. So I will actually be reading these books. I'm going to start reading them in the beginning of February and then post the pictures on the days I'm supposed to post them. Um, on the 15th, you're supposed to post a book that the caption, sorry, I have the descriptions of all of the various challenges um, written out because I don't remember them off the top of my head. Um, day one, you're supposed to uh, post a mirror image or which is a cover recreation or an homage to a beautiful black woman. The first time I saw this cover, I fell in love with it. Um, I just, there's a lot of reasons to love it. You can't see it very well on the camera, but the color is teal and pink and purple. Um, Zenny is the girl's name. Uh, the the sass and on, on attitude on her face is priceless. Um, she's set to inherit an estate from an elderly relative who has passed, but she has to marry to do it. Um, because that's not inconvenient at all, right? Um, this next one is a book that's been slept on, a book no one talks about. I am obsessed with this series. I read the first book a while ago, actually gifted the first book to my daughter as a part of In December. Um, I'm finally going to get to read the second book. The first book was called The Pygmy Dragon by Mark Sakia. This is the Onyx Dragon. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Um, the main character is a black pygmy who also happens to be a dragon shapeshifter. She finds that out about halfway through the first book. So this book is a lot of her, and, and she's a rare onyx dragon. She's a black dragon and onyx dragons are extremely rare. She is one. So, um, which is going to make her um, the, the, the focus of interest from evil people and good people. She's, she's going to draw the attention of people of power, creatures of power, um, simply because of how rare her type is. So, this should be interesting. Um, call and response. This book I might be more excited about than anything else on my read, on my TBR right now. Um, call and response. This is a community recommendation. And I found this on another person's, actually, no, I found this on the sheet, I believe, um, under her video for Blackathon, uh, under their video for Blackathon, Bowties and Books shared a list of recommended books. And the list is beautiful. It's very, very detailed. Every possible connection is in that list. They're listed in general genres, but then with underneath that, you'll get LGBTQ representation, thriller, romance, whatever. Um, so you can find them. So I counted that as a recommendation. I hope that counts. Bowties and books, if it doesn't, I apologize. You can yell at me for it later. I absolutely love the book Pride and Prejudice. Love it. It's my favorite Jane Austen book, hands down. E.B. Zoboi has written Pride, which is a retelling, and I am so here for this. I can't wait to read this. Um, I've gone and looked online at a couple of reviews. Not only did it come highly recommended by Bowties and Books, but it came recommended by a couple of other friends of mine. Um, so I am excited to read. I love a good retelling if you can do it well. Um, I'm very, very excited to read this retelling. This re they don't call it a retelling. They call it a remix. It's a Pride and Prejudice remix, and I'm very, very here for this. Um, Black Boy Joy, a lighthearted comfort read. Again, I had to go with recommendations because my own knowledge of Black authors and Black literature is really kind of crappy. Um, but The Wedding Day by Jasmine Gilroy. Again, I have a friend who highly recommended it. Um, I think it's one of those, uh, it's also a Reese Witherspoon book club pick. Um, I think it's one of those um, 
wanted a, a, a date for a wedding so she would look pathetic and ends up falling for a guy kind of thing. So lighthearted, typical romance trope, but I'm here for romances. I love them. Uh, black Girl Magic. This was um, science fiction fantasy with a black protagonist. Have you heard the picture? Um, this one has been on my, it's on my TBR for the year. It's, it's been on my radar for months and I really want to read it and the sequel, which is out now. Um, but it's falling under this category for me. I've practiced this name and I'm probably going to slaughter it again, so I apologize. Tomi Aidayemi. If I said it wrong, I apologize. Children of Blood and Bone. Um, I will be definitely diving into that one this month. I'm excited. Um, Pose is a black LGBTQIA book. Odd one out by Nick Stone. We'll be filling that um, prompt for me. Don't know much about it other than, it, again, I'm highly recommended. And finally, My Kitchen. This is a book um, covering black mental health or disability. And this is called Little and Lion. And again, I don't know much about it other than it covers the prompt. So I'm excited. Um, these will be posting. And this is an Instagram challenge that I'm doing. I decided not to do um, the YouTube challenge because trying to film and upload that many videos in February would drive me insane. Um, so I am doing the Instagram challenge because I can quick post a picture, but I'm going to start reading these um, right now. <laughs> Tonight, I'm going to start up with one of them, um, but I'm going to make sure I post these pictures on my Instagram and do a little bookstagram moment with these. Um, so that's the Blackathon challenge running February 15th through the 21st. Um, like I said, if you're interested, and I'll try to remember to put the link in the comments to this video, um, Bowties in Books has done a beautiful job putting all the information you could possibly need in their comments underneath that video. Um, they have thought this out really, really well. I think it's a second go round of Blackathon, maybe. So obviously if you start redoing challenges, you learn some things the first time around and you can make it better the second time around. So um, I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited about stretching my my reading. Um, it even inspired me to pick up a couple. I know I promised I was promised myself I was going to get rid of books on my Kindle, but I picked up two or three books on my Kindle as well that are by black, about black characters by black authors. So um, I'm doing much better at increasing my own voices reading. Um, along that line, I have also increased my own voices reading in the LGBTQ community. And if you are looking for a good read in that particular um, own voices category, Nottingham by Anna Burke, you have to pick it up and read it. Um, Robin is a girl. Marion is the daughter of the sheriff of Nottingham. And Robin and Marion still fall in love. There's transgender representation. Robin and, and the Merry Band of Thieves are, um, well, almost all women. And they take out the sheriff of Nottingham. They take the sheriff of Nottingham down. A group of women. As Robin says in one, in one quote, Nottingham's daughters. I love it. Um, so if you're if you're looking for representation, that's a great one. Um, Long Buck Vale by Jennifer Flynn Boyle, I believe is her name, um, is another good one. So um, I encourage you to keep trying to find authors outside of your comfort zone, find genres outside of your comfort zone, um, and stretch yourself. You're going to find some authors and some books you really, really like. So... Um, please check the comments below for um, links to other booktubers videos people I've given shout outs to here in this one um, and I look forward to hearing what you're reading and liking and enjoying um, about your reading so far this month this year in 2020 and what you have planned for February have a great night <laughs>